Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. Let's turn to 376. Start out our service with this. 376. I should say our opening, I guess. Sunday School opening. 376. Let's all stand, please, and, and sing it together.
way you sang that this morning. That was great. Remain standing, please. Remain standing. We're going to say our pledge this morning, all right? First, our pledge to the Bible, all right? Here we go. You ready? Put your hand over your heart and look up here. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty for all who believe. Great. Now the stars and stripes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. You may be seated. All right, you're going to help with the offering this morning. Come on up. And uh, your, your hand right here in the front row. You come on. You too, right here. Thank you for volunteering. You Amen. Too. Let's uh, pray first, and we can help Jesus this morning. Lord, thank you so much for this day you've given to us. It's a gift from you, and we're so thankful that you love us. Give us a church to come and worship you in. Lord, I pray to bless us offerings that is given this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 children are here and uh, I'm so glad to see folks here some that have been ill and now you're better and boy it's been something hasn't it so many people are still sick and mm -hmm. we're glad to be here I was talking to my brother this morning down in Georgia and his church is not able to meet today because like over half of them are sick so it's just what's going on in this world but I'm glad that you're here today we had a wonderful time with our family Christmas yesterday it was delayed because of illness got to hold our little granddaughter and uh, it was a blessing so we're very thankful for that I just want to encourage you uh, it's just going to get better okay weather wise it's going to get better you know we're in the we're in the peak of the winter and I know it can be bad in, in February March but I look at it this way when you start getting past the first of the year there's just a, a brightness ahead I, I call it springtime you know there's a certain brightness it, 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 it's like back in the fall there's a darkness ahead to me when I think about the winter. Now we're in the middle of it, it's not so bad, and uh, it's gonna just get better and better, amen? Well, just hope you'll be back tonight. We'll be studying in the book of Philippians, continuing that study, and uh, just to let you know a few things there. I do have a, a couple of prayer requests I wanna mention, and I'll mention them with our adults, you know, again, but some of you might be going away to your classes and you don't know this. Jan May, who used to go to church here uh, for many years, had open heart surgery, um, I think it was Thursday morning, she had that surgery. And uh, she, after talking to Chuck yesterday, it sounds like she's stabilized and everything's good. So I'm sure she's still in the hospital right now, but uh, might be coming home soon. Keep praying for the maids, if you will. Pastor Mark. All right, thank you, Pastor. Any birthdays this last week, the first week of January. Anyone have a birthday? You went last week, yeah. You went last week. All right, any wedding anniversaries? First week of January. No one said, I'm resolved to get married. No. <laughs> All right, very good. We'd like to acknowledge those if we have those, but we don't have any today. Now, today, I need your help for the course before we go to Sunday school today. I need kids' help. We're going to build a house today. And hopefully build a strong one on a rock and not on sand, all right? We're going to sing the wise man and the foolish man this morning. Let's all stand up. And kids, I need your help this morning. We're going to build a house, okay? <clears throat> The 
wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the house on the sand went splash. Oh no. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord. Right. Let's be Thank you, kids. You were a big help with Pastor Mark with that song. Good job. I was just seeing this documentary about Lake Michigan and Lake Huron are higher, you know, than they have been a long time. And these rich people's houses are crumbling and falling into the... It's undermining these houses and they're collapsing. Not, you know, not all of them, but quite a few houses have been lost. That just reminds me of that song. They built their house upon the sand. <clears throat> now in a minute, we're going to be in Luke <clears throat> chapter 10. Did I say it right? Yeah. Now actually, we're going to go to, up to two, Luke 10, excuse me, verse eight, uh, 17. That's where we're going to be in a few minutes. Luke 10, 17. But let's talk about some prayer requests. I had a text last night from uh, Ann Broughton that her son, Jonathan, tested positive and... Uh, so they're going to have to lay low for a while and ask for prayer. And uh, I don't know if you knew about this, but his his girlfriend, Laura, came to our Christmas party. And a uh, very nice lady. And she's had some surgery having to do with thyroid. And so she needs to be on our prayer list too. Laura, I think her last name is Lucier. But anyway, there's one. And then um, I was talking to... Um, Joan Maycroft, you see they're not here this morning. Joan's um, granddaughter, one of her granddaughters, it's Rebecca, uh, tested late in the week, like Thursday, uh, tested positive. So pray for Joan and, and um, Walt. They're doing okay, but they, they don't want to get it, you know? So pray for them. Um, just got a call from my brother, and my mom is failing. She's, he called me about 10 minutes before prayer time. Their church is not having church down there. And so he's um, he's going to be going over to try to see her. Yesterday when he saw her, they, they pulled her out to the window. He wasn't allowed to go in because of some things going on there. And he said she couldn't lift her head. She didn't even open her eyes. She, I don't even know if he said if she knew I was there. I was trying to talk to her. So it's, it's not looking good. My mom's failing. So please pray about that. So that's her son. Don't forget to pray for uh, the Jackie Gunnison's family in her passing. Uh, I talked to Jill last week. We finally got things figured out as far as this coming Saturday. The, the memorial service is at 11, not noon. She's been telling people noon. We got that ironed out. Uh, the visitation with family is at 10 a.m. And so that'll all happen here. And there'll be a luncheon afterwards Saturday. Okay, pray for... Uh, Jill and the rest of her family. Um, <clears throat> there's a man, he's the son of a pastor, cross state. His name is Ben Brown. 
uh, the pastor, uh, Brown, already passed away from COVID, and that's uh, Rene Crombay's pastor over there in Monroe. And But his son, Ben, is a big strapping guy. He is very weak in the hospital. His oxygen levels are low. He's been in there for a long time, um, and, and people are just spread. I've got had some other preacher friends text me, pray for Ben Brown, and then hearing from uh, him recently that his, this close friend of his is failing. Pray for Ben Brown. I don't think he's out of his 40s. I think he's in his 40s. So that's rough. I talked to, to um, actually texted Tom Francis yesterday. Kathy's improving, but has a long way to go. Pray for Kathy Francis in her recovery from open heart surgery. And I mentioned Jan May a few minutes ago. Pray for Chuck and Jan. Uh, Pastor Richard Yates is doing uh, better. He can hear better. Pastor Mark said that's been re a real help talking to him. And Matt Yates, Pastor Mark's brother, has some tremendous back pain. Uh, had surgery, didn't take. And this last surgery he had, it, it didn't do what he needed. He's still in tremendous pain. So he's searching. He's trying to figure out what to do. He's got to have something, uh, some kind of relief. Pray for Matt and his wife, Karen. They both have huge issues. Well, that's all I have on my list. What about yourself, Tim? I have a couple. Uh, one is um, John um, Bell, who used to come here, the older fellow. The yeah. Older pastor. His, um, he's actually been pastoring a church in his condition. I mean, you know, he's not the... He's is, he, is his brother Stan, was he the, the, the uh, uh, principal over at North Point at one time? Is that the same fellow? I, I don't know, but John and his wife used to come here for quite a bit. You yeah. That? So, I do remember him. Yeah, so he's actually been pastoring West Chester Church. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's Baptist or what. <laughs> um, it's an old stone, like a real old building up out that way towards Ravana or whatever. Are you sure it's not North Chester? North Chester, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's on 15 Mile. Okay, so anyway, their pastor, um, they just had to kick him out. He stole a whole bunch of money from the church, and he went through a bunch of... Like he, I heard about it. He drained it. But anyway, um, they're down, they were down to like eight people or something. Like the church was almost going under. And they called Don and he's rescuing them. Good. So they're up to 20 people or 30 now. Praise God. So, Because Les Carew told me that they closed their doors. So that's since then, this yeah, has happened. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, he, uh, I, he's a customer of mine. And he was telling me about it. And I asked him if we could pray for the church. Amen. And he said that would be a real blessing if we could. So um, that's just something we can add on our prayer list. Sure. To pray for that. North church. Chester, yes. And then um, Judd has been struggling with um, breathing problems. And he's been to, I don't know, all week he was to different doctors and to different. He's just sick of it. He's trying to get better. And um, he had an endoscopy uh, one day where they took a throat. Oh. He used to just throw it out to send it in to get it tested and everything like that. But um, he's got all his results coming back. And uh, some of his readings are off and stuff. But he's working with a really good um, allergist. And this guy spent one hour and one and three quarters hours person one to one with Judd. Wow. In his office trying to figure out what's going on with him. So he diagnosed him as having uh, medium to severe asthma. Oh, wow. So he's given them all medication for that, and it's seeming to help the last few couple days. But he'll go for three, four, five days and be pretty good. And then all of a sudden, he's it. locked up and he can't breathe. So wow. um, he's had it. It's been an ongoing thing for almost since he had COVID a year ago. So um, he's uh, we're kind of concerned about it. So I definitely. If everybody can just pray that this will be the answer for him. And then he's got an appointment coming up for an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Okay. Because they found, they found um, nodules up in his nostrils, and they think that's some of what's... He, they said that when you have them, your body thinks you have a sinus infection all the time. So it triggers your immune system into fighting that, so it drains all the energy out of you yeah. and does a bunch of stuff. So... This guy's pretty smart, and he's been trying to figure him out. So I definitely um, pray for Judd. Yeah, he's been at home more, and he's been at work the past month. So if you could uh, just remember him, and hopefully between all these different doctors and getting together, 
Definitely. He also works with our chiropractor who's probably smarter than all of them. So he, uh, he, um, he's been uh, helping him a lot too. But he just also, he's been having stomach issues ever since he was a kid. And uh, he wants to get that fixed too. He's just sick of being sick. Yeah. So um, he just sent in a food, food allergy test saying that he found online and our chiropractor recommended it. And, he, and he's getting the results of that back this week. So maybe, maybe finding these things out will help him get some relief. And yeah, well, that's what amen. we're hoping. So How's your mom too, by the way? I just visited her. Um, yesterday and you can go in and go to her room as long as you wear one of them spacesuit contraption masks so i did that and i went in there uh, um, and um, she didn't recognize me because it covers most of your face but um once she once i said hey what are you doing like that she said, hey that's my son and, uh, so, um, i uh, i was able to go sit on her bed and be with her for about three quarters of an hour We'll try to get over there again, Tim. Yeah. Soon, Tim. Did you get her a gift that I put on? That? I did. She she earned that money by playing bingo in 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 a uh, um, nursing home. They give them tickets, and with them tickets, they can purchase stuff. So she bought that item. Yeah. So I'll tell Mary that it, it was like her own work to make that money to do that. So and she bought. So get a kick out of that. She bought all her grandkids and all the family presents yeah. from that. That's awesome. So don't ever play her in bingo. So, <laughs> so, but but anyway, yeah, she she uh, I think she's failing too a little bit. But, yeah. Um, she. Uh, you mentioned some things. Her speech is a little bit more slurred than what it was, but she definitely was in good spirits when I surprised her because I hadn't seen her in a couple of weeks. So we keep praying for. Her. Yeah. Definitely pray for for Judd too and for uh, Northchester Don Bill. I have a special prayer request this morning. I forgot. I'm surprised I didn't remember it with, with Pastor Mark. Tanya had a very rough week. She spent two and a half nights, two, two nights and a full day in the hospital. Part of it was in the emergency. She had severe vertigo. And um, they couldn't figure out. They, did, they looked for things in her uh, with MRI scans. And she came back clear on everything. They think it was just... You know, she was doing some drywall up above her head, and she said all of a sudden it started. I said, all that is is the crystals got dislodged in the in your ear. Yeah. That's all it is. Uh, she was home yesterday. She said, I'm still not right, but I'm back. glad to be home. Yeah. So pray for Tanya. Anyone else? Yes, Sharon. Tim won't say it, so I guess I will. He's having trouble with one of his eyes again. Really? My right one, it's all yeah. foggy. I can't see out of it basically. So I got a, I got an appointment right away though. I got one uh, the end of February, so um, I should be. Well, I pray you get in before that. That's a long I ways know, away. That was a, they had one on a date I was already planning to go on to go snowmobiling. So I'm going to close one eye and drive. So pray for me that I don't hit it. So. Do you have Do you have a dominant eye? Yeah, the one that's fogged over. Okay, that's that's bad. That's not good. They said it. They said it's protein because when I when I had my uh, cataracts removed, I had lenses inserted, so I as you knew I didn't wear glasses for a while. But um, that that lens is uh, built up around the edges of it with protein, and it like won't let it breathe, so then it fogs up. I, I've heard of that before. So they got to take a laser in, which is the worst thing I had done out of all my surgeries, and they got to fry my eyeball again for. Half an hour in there and smoke comes out. <laughs> it's father in April, maybe he's feeling it. So it is, we're going to be yelling at him. Put your head down. No, you don't have to for that. But, um, we'll definitely pray for your anyway, eyes. Yeah. It's not life or death, but it's just I'm having a hard time. It's like, especially at night when I drive. Oh, yeah. This eyes, all the things will, whew, yeah. like, all out like that. So. That's tough. There was another hand up front. Is that you, Donna? Yeah. Um, Debbie's been struggling with her um, taste and smell. Okay. It's, she had As a result of having COVID? Back yeah. In October. And it comes and then it just, yeah. it's gone. So let's pray that that will come to an end so she can yeah. have the normalcy there. And I've heard of several people still having that struggle. And people at her job is getting COVID. So they're already low. All right. Be praying for you, Debbie. Anyone else? 
Yes, DJ. Uh, I learned early in the week that a previous employee of my work was uh, in a, he was, was T-boned in a car accident his first of the year. Um, you know, we didn't see him except his dad, uh, but actually my coworkers, uh, fiance is taking care of him in, in uh, ICU. So uh, I respect that he's not saying anything, but he asked me to say a prayer for him because he's in really, really bad shape. Okay. What's the first name? Uh, Tom. Let's pray for Tom, who's I been in this bad have, wreck. I think he may have a broken back. Wow. Okay. Um, and then continued prayers for the Van Houten family and the tragedy. Van Houten, that's right. The ones that lost their daughter. Yep. Anyone else? There's a lead. I want to mention this, and I'm going to pray. Through Dave Nelson, I have a lead for a house for Les and Carol. I got a call on one lady that knows another lady. Just pray that we can get this solved, okay? So we can get them a place to live for that seven months that they need. Father, so many things mentioned this morning. Lord, I, I won't repeat them all because I know that you know what we have need of even before we ask. I especially pray for these health needs for, for Tim's eye situation, Lord, for Judd's, both the breathing and uh, uh, his stomach issues, Lord, may he find answers and relief. We pray for North Chester and uh, there, that uh, Brother Velt as he helps that church to stay alive, Lord. I pray that they would not close their doors, that they would keep on going. And Lord, I pray that you would just uh, uh, use your power. As Lord, you've said that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Someone told this church to close their doors and fold up one day a long time ago. And I'm thankful for the people that did not listen to them and they kept things going. I pray for good things and great things for North Chester uh, as they go forward. Lord, I pray, Father, for Tanya to give her complete uh, relief from vertigo, Lord. She's had a severe case of it. I pray for Debbie that you would restore her taste and smell and, and help her, Lord. And Lord, we hear about so many co-workers uh, uh, getting sick and some business is shutting down. And I think of families that have just contacted me last night and this week about people in their family that are sick so they can't come. I pray that you will protect them and help them to come back soon. I pray for this man named Tom that was in a wreck. Lord, I thank you for the awesome time I had with uh, family yesterday, Lord. It was a, a, an answer to prayer because we didn't know if it was gonna happen because of all the illness. Thank you that everyone's better. Now, Lord, I just pray for our study in your precious word. Open our eyes, Lord, and open our understanding. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. We're doing a walk through the gospels, and in doing so, we are hearing the words of Christ because they're read, read if you have a red letter edition. And hopefully when we get through with the book of John, um, <clears throat> people who have had an understanding of the Gospels will be enlightened more because to understand Christ's life, um, and this will kind of play into my message later today. I'll say something you might see a similarity to this note. To understand Christ's words is really, really, really important. We have the Word of God, and Jesus <clears throat> is called the Word, and this is all the revelation we're going to get. I don't believe these people say, I have a new revelation. I had this vision, or I had that. No, the Word of God is complete, and Jesus is the Word, and everything in the Scriptures has to do with Him. So know that purpose of our study is not just reading through the Bible. We're looking for things to learn about our Lord and what He thinks so that we can think and act like Him more, okay? Understand that. Verse 17 of chapter 10, I used this recently in a message that I preached about joy. I think you'll probably wonder... Hey, where have I recently seen that? That's where it came from. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan like lightning, as lightning, fall from heaven. Now, there's a lot to say about that right there. Um, and we will talk about it in a minute. Just hang on to that thought. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, <clears throat> and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What a powerful statement that is. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 28, 
All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He has the power over demonic activity, Satan. He has the power over all the evil in this world. And in his time, he will wipe it out. His purpose, if you'll read Daniel 9 and verse 24, is to make an end of sins. His purpose is, is to finish the transgression and to bring in everlasting righteousness. And you might think, well, why hasn't he done it already? You know, that's kind of our, uh, our attitude sometimes. We, we don't want to wait on the Lord anymore. But it, remember, with him, a thousand years is as one day and one day is as a thousand years. We are bound by time and we can't see things that way. Things are dragging, they're, they're long, they're, it, but just remember, he's overall and, uh, and, and overseeing all. He is sovereign and he is going to bring it to pass. Just trust him on that. But this is interesting, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. He's saying that, that's nothing to be happy about. And, and I think I, I would, I don't know the answer, I just have a, a thought I want to share with you in a second. But he says, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I imagine that it wasn't a happy occasion when one third of the perfect created beings that he made for his own glory defected and followed Lucifer. It wasn't a joyful thing in the heart of the Lord. The Lord God. Now, he knows all. He wasn't. How did that happen? He's not shocked. He's all-knowing, omniscient. It was all part of his plan. But it wasn't something that he would say rejoice about because it was a bad thing that happened. And he's saying, rejoice not that the devils are subject of it. Rather, rejoice because your names are written down in heaven. Let's be happy about something that's solid, that's eternal, that's permanent, isn't that great to think about that? Your names are written down in heaven. If you're saved, your name is written down. Now that's, that's astounding. That's, that's truly a, a, uh, a thought that ought to occupy your, your minds from time to time uh, for meditation and for when you're chewing the cud, so to speak, spiritually speaking. That's what the deer and ruminants and deer and, and cows do. They sit there and they... They, they have four stomachs, and one of them brings up that food, and they chew it more. They swallow it, they bring it up, and they chew it more. Interesting, isn't it? You say, that's really gross. Well, you ought to do that spiritually. We ought to spiritually think about the things we read in the scriptures and, and mull them over. It was really, really cute yesterday. We were, we were sitting there, and um, I forget the exact words, but Kara said that uh, Avalyn, and Avalyn's the oldest. She's a real thinker. And she was sitting there one day, and she said, where did God come from? She, it just baffled her. She just sat there thinking, and she said, Mom, where did God come from? Now, for a six or seven-year-old to say that, that's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. That they're sitting there thinking about God and asking questions. And that's what we ought to all be doing. But your answers are found here. Your answers aren't found through some mystic, through some palm reader. Uh, through the stars and astrology, your answers are found in the written word of God. Isn't that great? Notice that statement in 18. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. It was an instantaneous dismissal of Satan when he was found with sin. Remember in his heart, he said, I will, I will, I will, Lucifer. Boom, like lightning fall from heaven. So, there was a, a place that he had. It's described he was the anointed cherub. Uh, he walked up and down in the, the fiery stones of, uh, around the throne, and he brought glory to God. He had, he had a musical ability, uh, probably greater than anyone that's ever been a human being as far as music because it talked about the different pipes and timbrels and things like that. Uh, and yet it went to his head. Boom. Boom. He said, I'll be held Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Now, you got to get your information from the Bible. If you read uh, some of the writings of the Mormons, they, they believe this theory that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers, and Jesus kind of uh, pulled a fast one, and Lucifer got the raw end of the deal. Now, 
Think about that. If you are eliciting sympathy for the devil, where is that doctrine coming from? The devil. Okay? So think about that. No, we don't find that in the Bible. You might find something like that in the Apocrypha. Be careful. The, the, the Apocrypha was included as part of the scriptures by the Catholics back in the day. And uh, some of the Apocrypha is even quoted in the scriptures. What does that say? That we accept all of it? Well, no. Uh, I think the book of Enoch is pretty accurate, uh, uh, but we don't know if there's been revisions. And I think the reason that it wasn't part of the Bible is because God didn't see the need. He quoted it. The Holy Spirit quoted it in Jude. Uh, you can read that, but there are some really fanciful things in part of the Apocrypha that don't become part of the Bible. So don't believe things that you know mystics say or world says about the devil. For one thing, they say he's a myth, that he doesn't really exist, that he's an imagination of man. No, Jesus said it right here. I beheld Satan like lightning fall down from heaven. Instantaneous. He dealt with Satan being tempted of him. Satan is a real person, not human, but individual, a being. Uh, we consider him a fallen angel. Uh, the hierarchy of the fallen angels, he is the top. He is the uh, prince and power of the air, the Bible says, and he will. He is defeated, and he will have an end, which is the lake of fire. Before that, for a thousand years, will be in the bottomless pit. But he has one last hurrah. You can read about it in Revelation 20. But Satan, it's wonderful to not have to worry about Satan. You know, theatrics of some preachers, I've heard of some preachers taking a chair and throwing it across the stage at Satan, who was over there trying to bother him during their medicine. That's theatrics. I don't know that I've ever come close to Satan. I don't know that I've ever been close. I don't know if you've ever been close. I don't matter. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I have the Lord Jesus in my heart. How about you? If you have Christ, he dwells in you. Satan cannot inhabit you. But Jesus is making a statement here. I beheld Satan like lightning. Instantaneous control. And remember, go back to Job and read about how the God himself challenged Satan about Job. God brought it up. Have you considered my servant Job? And read that story sometime. Very amazing. Where Satan does what he does, where he goes. He says, yeah, I've been walking to about, about in the, up and down in the earth. The book of Peter says that he walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He desires to sift Peter as wheat. Who, know, who knows what he wants to do with you? Uh, he is the accuser of the brethren. The Bible describes that. And the book of Revelation talks about the fact that he, there's war between Michael and the angels and Satan and his angels, and they are cast out. What does it mean? In the spiritual realm, he will not have access. Right now, he has access for one purpose, being an accuser of the brethren. He goes up there and he tells on me. God already knows all about me. But he goes up there and says, how can you let that, that man stand in the pulpit and preach? You know what he thinks. You know what he's doing and he'll say, and I don't know what Christ says, but I do know this. He's my, as the scripture says, my advocate. He's my lawyer. He's my intercessor. And I believe Satan is put down for whenever he accuses you or me. Night and day, Jesus says he's under the blood. She's under the blood. She's part of my bride. You can't have her. You can't touch her. I don't know what he's saying, but he is resisting the devil in that place. I don't understand it. I just know he is the accuser of the brethren. And that's not going to be forever. That's why when he gets cast down to earth, this is not, this is future. This is not this past tense like lightning, but this is future. When he is no longer allowed access to accuse, he is very angry and he goes after the Jews and he goes after believers in a very intense way. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. So just know Satan is real, okay? That's my message on that. Any question about this uh, names written in heaven or Satan? Do you want to say anything? Anybody? I don't mean to cut anybody off. I've been missing Morris in Sunday school. They haven't been able to be here for the last two or three weeks. Yes, sir? It's not exactly about that, but it's about the Apocrypha. Part of me wanted to dig into that at one point, into the book of Enoch, because of Jude, but the things we learn can't be unlearned. 
So you start taking in some of that stuff, and some it really can mess with you. And there's some things in there, and not so much what you can start noticing if you look at some of the stuff I read from the Apocrypha. It was clear it was Middle Age when it was written, because some of the things are in there naming they're naming angels. They're trying to name the 200 angels where they get 200. They say there are 200 angels that committed uh, sexual sin with women, Genesis 6, and they try to name them in the Apocrypha. And they have some weird names, let me tell you. And they say that they all came down on Mount Hermon. That's their entry point to the earth and so forth. All of that's fanciful, okay? Just can't be unlearned, that's all I know. Well, what I'd like to do with in relation to that, uh, the Bible to supersedes all of that. You know, just like you learn, you learn lots of facts and figures, uh, you know, every day, and you learn things from the internet. And um, but has, how many Christians are forgetting the memorization of Scripture? It's true, you, you can't be unlearned, but we can by focusing more on this. It can go rele relegate it further and further to the back burner. That's the key. That's how you can undo some of the learning that you don't know if it's accurate or not. And we'll talk about this a little later in Hebrews 5. It'll come up. I'll, I'll guarantee it. Lord willing. All right. Good, good point, though, TJ. Here's an interesting verse, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. You, you don't find that too many times in the Bible where Jesus is rejoicing in his spirit. And many times he's, he groaned in his spirit because of unbelief or or this, or he, you know, he was in great agony, prayer, and so forth. But here he's rejoicing in his spirit, and he said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Isn't that interesting? Revealed them unto babes. We're going to talk about babes a little later in Hebrews 5, but I think the way the Lord means this is these men were babes. Uh, he, he talked about they were dull of hearing, and yet he graduated them along to a point where they could stand and preach at Pentecost or go as missionaries over the whole world and die as martyrs because they truly believed what they saw and they believed in him. So it's interesting that he rejoices in his spirit that these, the uppity-ups, you know, the wise and prudent, the people who think they're such, uh, you know, aren't really all that, okay? That's the thing you need to realize. People who think there's something aren't, are nothing. And that's why we need to think right. You know nothing yet as you ought to know, 1 Corinthians 8, 2. If any man thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself, the Bible says. If any man thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Every one of us is subject to failure, and we need to relegate ourselves to this status as babes. Even if you're mature in the Lord, think of yourself as a babe so that you will long for the sincere milk of the word. And you might say, well, I shouldn't be on milk. Uh, I'll talk about that a little later. But uh, if you'll relegate yourself to that way, I think you can always gain more from the scripture than if you walk around and say, eh, I know this. Oh, the preacher's gonna preach on that. I, I'm gonna tune him out. I'm gonna take my phone during the message. I'm just gonna look at some YouTube videos. Or, you know, I don't know. What's, what's going on out there? I don't well, I can't see what people are doing, but I know that happens at church sometimes. People thinking, oh, I already ought to, I got this already. I know this already. See, there's always more to learn when it comes to the Bible. And so we need to think of ourselves as babes. All things are delivered to me of my Father, verse 22 says, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. <clears throat> at this point, and by the way, his whole purpose is that we might know him. His whole desire, remember that prayer? We talked about it last week. In fact, let's, let's just look at it a minute to, to make this point. Um, what was part of his prayer in John 17? It goes right along with this. He says, um, let's see. O oh, righteous, last two verses. O oh, righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it 
that the love, wherewith thou hast loved me, may be in them and I in them. And he's, he just prays all along that, they, that we can be one, that they may know the Father, that all of these wonderful things that Jesus prayed in that prayer. Now we see him saying, uh, at this point in time of his ministry, nobody knows him, really knows him. Nobody really knows the Father. But he is revealing himself, not to the prudent and wise, the noble, the powerful, but to the babes. And he turned to, um, to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. Talked about eyes this morning. And uh, I'm praying for you about that, Tim. You've been through a lot already. I hate to hear you got to go through all of that again and more. Um, but he says, blessed are your eyes which have seen the things. That... He's not talking to us now because Peter wrote later, whom having not seen, you love. We are walking by faith, not by sight, are we not? He's talking to the ones that got to see. He says, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Did they, they recognize it? Did they realize what a blessing what it was for them to see what the Lord could do? Uh, you know, feeding 5,000, uh, raising Lazarus from the dead, hearing his precious word. Did they grasp it? Maybe later, but at this point in time, probably not. And sometimes we, you know, we, we don't realize the blessings of God until we can't do the things we used to do or we don't have it anymore. Think about it that way. How much we might miss someone we love. We think about, wow, that time went by so fast. Maybe it's the same with uh, time to serve the Lord. Um, somebody has said, the night is coming. The day is far spent. You know, to serve the Lord, we have an opportunity, a window of opportunity. If we fritter away the time, we're going to rue that day when we look back and say, I wish I would have done more for the Lord. I think all of us are going to rue that day, not just one person. I think we all will. But he's saying, blessed are your eyes. What you've seen and what you've heard, you just don't realize how blessed you are. Let's talk about the Good Samaritan now in our last five minutes, a quarter after. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. The Bible, through the Holy Spirit, tells us the intent of the heart, doesn't it? So it's telling us that this man's intention was to trick Jesus, tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do uh, to inherit eternal life. <clears throat> and he said to them, what is written in the law? How readest thou? He answered and said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to them, thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. There's the big caveat right there, this do. Can any of us do that? Can anyone do that? Only Jesus did it. So that's why we know when we come to the New Testament, we find out that salvation is available to those who put their faith and trust in Christ's finished work and they, they are attributed and accounted as righteous through the blood of Christ. They can't count on their own righteousness, which is of the law, because that righteousness is as filthy rags. That righteousness, and Paul talked about, he's have the law, concerning the law, blameless. But that was before he was saved. When you get saved, you realize it's not by works. Not by works. Can't do, I can't do anything other than put my faith in Jesus. I can believe that Jesus is God. So he goes on and he says, and thou shalt live. This do and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself. And here's the truth coming out and said unto Jesus. And who is my neighbor? Kind of like a snarky, smart alecky way of saying, and who's my neighbor then? And really, if you, were, if you were coming to it in the right attitude, you realize everybody you come into contact with. In essence, is your neighbor. Start from your closest one, your spouse, maybe your family, your parents, uh, your children. But your neighbor, your, your persons around your house, your neighbors, you think about them. And it might be your neighbor at work, the guy on the line next to you, on this side, that side. <clears throat> your neighbor in the lane. As um, the Holy Spirit convicts you about the road rage that you're experiencing right there. You have a neighbor right next to you. 
I remember the pastor that I was under down in Florida who said, he just wanted to kind of be funny, but he had, a lady said, honk if you love Jesus. That was the bumper sticker. So he honked, probably at the wrong time. Light was still red. She stepped out and started cussing him out. He just said, I just thought you wanted me to. It says, honk if you love Jesus. She jumped back in her car and took off. That's a bumper sticker religion, you know. You don't realize what you have on there sometimes. Um, here he says, who's my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Uh, I know it's, I'm not going to be able to finish all this today, but I just want to tell you something. There's an interesting song by uh, Hank Williams. Now, Hank Williams Sr., I believe, was a Christian. Now, he... He led a, a debauched life there toward the end and died in a Cadillac, probably drunk or on drugs. But his, most of his songs he wrote were uh, gospel related. He wrote a wonderful song uh, uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho about the Good Samaritan. Very, very talented man who knew the, the Lord. But, you know, money and the, the, the pull of all these other things. But uh, I, I listened to that song recently. It really kind of chokes you up. It's... <laughs> It's interesting the talent that some of these people had to write songs. And there's one about the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, about the Good Samaritan. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. You hear the Lord's even, the Lord's language there? He said something by chance. We know that nothing is by accident and nothing is, uh, uh, you know, a coincidence with God, and we know that all things work together for good to them who love God. But he's using this in his story and says, by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. What's important to that priest? To keep his ceremonial cleanness. He can't touch a dead body. He's got to, I mean, you know, he's got, let's think, what's important to a priest? I think about this, we're, we're riding down the road. Back in the day when I was young, people on the side of the road, and I was on the side of the road quite a few times and was helped by some of the uh, most interesting people. The people you don't expect to be helpers sometimes are the better helpers. I had a whole band of hippies help me one time, push my car and get it where I could get some help. And we were broke down on, uh, on I-75 up near Perry, Georgia. And, uh, you know, they were very nice people. If you looked at their looks, you would you might be repulsed or something. But I tell you what, I would rather have uh, five hippies pushing me than than four preachers standing there telling me why I should own a new car and not be. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I had that help from these these hippies and tried to witness to them. Mary and I did. We didn't have any kids at that time. But you know, back in the day, you help. Nowadays, you notice you see somebody on the side of the road. What do you do? They got a cell phone. Don't we? They got, a, they got a cell phone. They don't have to call for help. Wow. I mean, think about it. There are times where they might need help, really need help. I don't know. It's, it's just, you have to be discerning about that. But this man, my time is up. I'll put a mark here. We'll talk about this priest again next time. It's interesting that we talked about him because we're going to talk about priests this morning. <coughs> Lord, bless your word to our hearts today. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.